Okay, it's time for more videos about this. Now, in my previous video, I mentioned I'm going to put stuff on here, like 555 timer board. Well, there is a 555 timer thingy, which is going to be one of the things that's going to be permanent, permanently on this board. Anyway, another thing I'm going to make is a high-frequency oscillator to power a Tesla coil. Now, you may remember from the Slayer Exciter experiments that this oscillates at about 590 kilohertz. Well, I connected it up to the 555 timer and a MOSFET just to see if that would work, see if I could get the frequency within any kind of range that would power the tester coil, and it does kind of work. Only trouble is this is a real bugger to tune. Trouble is, when I put my hand near the tuning capacitors, to this tuning capacitor that I'm using to adjust the 555, yeah, I detune it. So, do so tuning the thing this way is impossible. And I found out that it's only putting about 59 kilohertz into there, which is way below the frequency that this thing should be getting. I said this thing works at about 590 kilohertz, and uh, I'm putting about 59 kilohertz into that. Well, that's only a tenth of what it needs. And that ain't good, because that's going to make that MOSFET really hot, because it's going to pull more power through it than it actually needs. As a matter of fact, that's already a little bit warm. Another nice thing that I didn't mention about this... This soft start mechanism that I've put in here has a nice little safety feature, which is kind of accidental innovation here. Now, if I tune this to a frequency that's really low, so low that the coil is going to pull a lot of power, there we go. It just trips out the relay, and because I was still holding the dead man switch, it keeps trying to restart, but of course, it won't. Unless we have a frequency that it's not going to pull so much current under. So anyway, going to make my own Tesla coil driver that operates at a much higher frequency. So here's one... <clears throat> So here's one circuit I found. Now, this isn't my own design. This is just one I found off the internet. But I'm going to base it on this. It uses a CD4046 chip, and I've got a few of those, so that's not a problem. But it's going to use this circuit here. What we have here is the same chip. Um, just ignore the stuff that's on the right-hand side, because this is the actual chip itself. It's not going to be using any of the PLL functions or anything like that. Just the voltage controlled oscillator. This other chip on the right is just a frequency divider which which I'm obviously not going to be using. So just this bit here connects to a couple of transistors and a MOSFET like what we've got right here and we'll see how it goes. Building the board. Okay, here you see, I mean, here you see all the component, uh, well, all the components besides the chip of course. All in this little board I guess you're wondering why this resistor's at an angle. Well, it's got this really weird pin pitch, as you can see. It doesn't line up with the holes properly. So, put it in angle like that. Pins line up perfectly. And the more observant of you may have noticed that there's an extra resistor here. Well, don't want to release the magic smoke when I connect the chip up, so, uh, you know, just in case. Put a resistor between here and here. It shouldn't go... Anyway, I just decided to recycle one of my grotty old boards. So that's why it's got lots of solder on there already. I've been taking components off left, right, and center, so I can put the new stuff on. The thing is, new board. And it's so shiny, I don't want to soil it. Oh, shiny. Well, here it is, built with wires. Now, let's just put in a chip. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Got my scope connected up to the output so we can see what we get. And I turn it on. And nothing. Oh, I see why it isn't working. Look. The power wires come out. Put that back in. 
Well, I saw a jump on the scope, but still nothing. Oh, no, no, I spoke too soon. Look at that. We have oscillation. Let's see, very, very high frequency oscillation here. I don't know what frequency we've got. Let's just put that on the highest it can go. And I'll measure this and see what we have. Should be somewhere in the megahertz range. I'm just trying to center that a little bit. All right. So it's one, two, three, four. I'd say that's about 4.2. So I'll just put that in the thing. But oh, there we go. I mean, there we go. 1.1 megahertz, or actually pretty much 1.2 megahertz. This little thing is gonna come in pretty handy. And I just recorded something, thinking the camera was recording, whereas in actual fact it was paused, so I was just going... Well, I was just talking and talking and talking without realizing it was recording. And then when I press the record button to, to stop it recording, it starts recording. Anyway, I just thought I'd test whether the MOSFETs are good enough to use in a Tesla coil. Well, test if that gate capacitance is going to be a problem. So I made this little push-pull circuit between the MOSFET and the uh, chip. I've also put this 10 ohm resistor in line with the MOSFET gate and this little push-pull thing. Just to see how much of a problem that gate capacitance is going to be. And as I turn the frequency way up, you can see it starts to diminish. And that resistor gets pretty damn hot. Right, well, okay. We're about to test this thing. I have the Tesla coil hooked up. Also put in series with the primary, a 10 ohm resistor, just to limit the power. Because I don't really want this thing shooting sparks across the room or anything like that. I don't want it pulling massive amounts of power through the MOSFET when I haven't got the frequency tuned properly. So anyway, I'm just going to zoom up on this and see if we get any plasma out of it at all. It would help if I move the camera up a bit. Okay, the camera is not going to focus. I'm just going to turn this on. And we don't have anything coming up, so I'm just going to twiddle the frequency control and see if we get anything. Oh, yes, there's something. Right about there. Okay, the resistor is out of the circuit. So it is now connected directly to the MOSFET. I'm just going to turn this on off quickly and let's see what we get. Ooh, sparkly. Let's see that with the lights out. I have no idea how hot the MOSFET is getting. But oh, there we go. Right, well. It definitely does seem to be in tune. Now, how hot did the MOSFET get? Absolutely cold. Well, as they say, all good things must come to an end, and unfortunately, that's the case with this thing. Corona has once again destroyed my coil. So when I turn it on now, well, as you can see, there's something burning in there. And it's only going to get worse. So I think I'm going to have to make myself a new coil.